and I'm back. And what I got here today is I got a little Whirlpool Duet Sport washing machine, and it was coming up with an F28 code in here. So I looked it up online, and an F28 code means that there's a communication error between the motor control board and either this control board here, or there's a control board right here that I just took out, which is this one right here. Okay, and they say sometimes you just, you know, disconnect the, the cables and then reconnect them and uh, that'll fix it. So I tried that on this board. It didn't seem to fix it. But luckily I have spare control boards. Uh, what we have here in this area is every year they have a, like an appliance cleanup. You know, you can put stuff out by the road and they'll, the municipality will pick it up and, and haul it off. And over the last couple of years, I've noticed identical washers to what we have here. And so I took them and parted them out. And I saved the, these pieces. So I've got a spare board. See, that's identical. That's identical. And then these are the motor control boards. And the other one's still in the machine here, but I have two spare motor control boards. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to swap one of these uh, spare boards in here. This, this one here has been marked original, see? And then this is spare one and spare two. I've marked that so I don't lose track of which board was in there. And here I've marked spare one and spare two. I mean, you know, if you don't have spare uh, parts, uh, it may just be a matter of uh, disconnecting the, the cables for a second and uh, plugging them back in, you know. So sometimes, you know, a little bit of moisture gets in those connectors or something like that happens. But uh, anyway, because I've got these spare boards, I'm going to try and swap a spare board in. Okay, so the other thing I did before I took the connectors off of those control panels is something I recommend you do with just about anything you take apart is I, I snapped a couple of pictures. So I snapped the pictures of where those connectors go in on the top. And on the side, so I can easily go to these pictures and know where each connector came out of. Because, I mean, there's, as you can see here, there's quite a few of them, right? So that's a quick and easy way if you've got a smartphone. And uh, just to know where, it's, where, where they went. Okay, so you see on my phone here, in the picture, I've got an empty spot. And then I've got a little gray connector. And the one with a blue mark on it. An empty spot. A red mark on it. And then there's a wide one, and actually there's a little black dot on the top right of that. And if you look down here, that's how I've got them set up. See that? Okay, that's the top. Now there's some connectors on the side. Okay, now down on the side, we can see we have, uh, it looks like a gray one with a bit of a green stripe. And uh, a gray with black, and then one with red, and then a blue. See, these are all marked. Okay, so I've got this little control board back in here. I've got all the connections in the appropriate holes. And it's all hooked up. And I've got all the leads uh, secured in these little holders here so they don't get in contact with the rotating drum. See that? And it just clips back into the frame here like this. There's a little pin over here. You push it in and it clicks down. Okay, that's that one. Now, we're going to stand clear, keep our fingers out of there. I'm going to put the power back on this and see if that fixed it. If not, we're going to go down below and get at the other control board, the one for the motor, and see if we can disconnect that one, hook it back up first and see if it fixes it. And if not, we'll change out that board. Okay, here goes power. All right. Okay. Power on. All right, let's just try a quick wash. Oh, it's still blinking F28, so there's a failure there. There's still a communication failure. You see that? So that board either wasn't the problem at all or the connections weren't bad. So, I, you know, I've got an extra board, that's why I put it in. But uh, that's not the that's not the fix. All right, so let's get at that other motor control board and the connectors and see if we can figure that out. And all important, make sure the plug is out before you go to the next step. Okay, so we're gonna take off this lower cover. There's quarter inch heads on these screws. There's two screws, one on either side here. And then this little cover just pulls out. Like that. Okay, and then we can get a look in there, 
And way back in there, I don't know if you can see it, I'll have to get a light, but that's the motor control board in there. Actually, there's another thing I'm doing while I'm in here with this cover off, and there's something that a lot of people uh, neglect, is that there's a filter here on the suction to the pump. That's the drain pump, and that picks up a lot of lint, and there'll be coins and all sorts of things in there sometimes. And uh, if you don't drain this out periodically, uh, there's a filter here, you can unscrew this, there'll be some water in here. Uh, if you don't you know, clear that out periodically, you'll get another error message and you'll get things like uh, it won't drain efficiently and you'll think it's the pump. But very often it's just this little filter that gets plugged up. So let me, I got a bucket in here. Let me just turn this counterclockwise and see if we can make a mess here today. Oh yeah, yeah I can make a mess. Yep, yep, true to form, I can make a mess. Get this out and look at the junk in there. There's a couple of screws that were in my pocket. See that? Look. And I don't know what that is. A little piece of Velcro strapping off of something, off a piece of clothing. And it smells. It smells like sewer, of course, because that's laying down there festering for months at a time. So it pays to get this cleaned out. It only takes a minute. You take that little front cover off. Take that little lower cover off. And drain this out. Some machines actually have a little door down here that lets you access this filter housing without taking the cover off. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll get this cleaned up before I put it back in. Okay, so in behind the pump and that filter, you can see it in there. That's the motor control board in there. And there is an easier way to get to this if you take the machine, uh, you know, if you take the back off the machine, you can get to it. But See, this machine is up on a on a raised pedestal, and it's it's heavy. It's hard to get down, so I'm going to try and access it from here. So here's here's the two spares I have, and what we're looking at when we look at in there, we're looking at the side of it like this, okay, and then down down here there's a little tab. Lift that little tab up that lets this lock go, and then I can just slide these feet out, and then we'll lift the whole thing out, and then. Uh, where the cable is going into it, on the side, the cable comes in here from the top and plugs into these terminals on the side. Okay, so I got a screwdriver, I'm going to put it under this little tab here. And then I'm going to pull the whole board this way. You can't. Oh. There it is. None the worse for wear. That's how it disconnects. Now, Okay, so I'm going to remove the back. So what I've done is I've tipped this front-loading washing machine out onto a box here. I've got a wooden box with a towel on it to protect the front. And I'm not going to have to put it right flat because it's going to hold it right here like this. And I've got lots of water hose. Anyway, the, the, there's a, about uh, 10 little screws here that'll take the back off and I'll be able to access the, that uh, motor control panel right about here. Okay, and it looks like there's, there's three connections there. One here, one there, and a little one there. Okay, so actually there was four connections in there. I'll show you where they were. This little pink one went there. And there was this little green wire. It's a ground wire. That one there, it's got a little bit of a squeeze on it. That went right on this tab right here beside it. And then there was this this wide one here. Okay, that went in here. And then there's a little one. That little guy right there went in here. Okay, so here's the one we're going to put in. Spare number one. Okay, so I've got all those wires connected. i got this little one with the pink wires here. That little green one there. The wide one. And that little one up in the corner there. Okay, and we're just going to put these wires back together and click that down on the bottom of the washer. All right, so I put the back on and I put every screw in it, hoping that I don't have to take it apart again. Hoping that this might be the fix. All right, here goes nothing. Power on. Okay. Pause, cancel. Power on. 
quick wash 28 minutes cold speed high end of signal on start Ooh, it's working it's locked the door It's filling. You can hear the water going through. I left the water on, didn't I? Yeah. The water's on. You can see the mechanism's working here. Wow. It's filling. Okay, so truth be told, this this isn't really conclusive. We, we don't know if it was just a loose connection down there on one of those boards or if it was the board itself. You know, uh, luckily I had spare boards. Okay, so there you have it. It's run through a whole cycle. It's just counting down now. And that seemed to have fixed it. So if you end up with an F 28 code on a Whirlpool washing machine, uh, unplug it, and then wiggle all the connectors on the, the different boards. There's one up here, there's a motor control board down below, and there, there's one under this panel right here. And uh, if that doesn't fix it, you may need to change a board. Luckily, in this case, I had some spare parts. And uh, that's actually another good idea. If you've got an older washing machine and you want to keep it going, you know, look for a second-hand one somewhere. You know, so often they're, they're kicking around, people are giving them away for other reasons other than an electrical failure in this case. And uh, you can pick it up, strip out those little parts you need. You know, in this case here, you know, they don't take up much room. I have them in a little box in storage and uh, they're good for the next time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you again here soon on Everyday Projects. And guess what? We're gonna have clean socks and underwear this week. Bye for now.